This is part 13 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss the use of extension data object. This is continuation to part 12, so please watch part 12 before proceeding. We'll be using the same example that we worked with in the previous session. Let's understand the use of extension data object with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is where we left in the previous session. We introduced the city field and we made it required. And this is a breaking change, meaning existing clients who have built their proxy classes already are going to break because they will be unaware that there's a new field that is required. As a result, they won't be supplying value for this field. And since this is a required field, the service is going to throw an exception. Let's actually look at that in action. So the service is already running. Getting an employee shouldn't be a problem. But then if we try to save this employee with a different ID, Look at that, we get an exception. Okay. In order to prevent this exception from happening, all we need to do is make this a non-required field. Introducing a new non-required field is a non-breaking change. Okay. And let's make it non-required. And let's say for some reason, we also want to remove this gender field from the employee data contract. And this gender is a non-required field. Removing non-required fields from existing data contracts, it's not going to break the existing clients. Okay. So with this change, you know, if we compile this, we get compilation errors. That's basically because we have removed this gender property from the employee data contract. And we didn't remove the references of that gender property within the employee service itself. So wherever we are referencing gender property, we need to remove all those references. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Now we need to modify the stored procedures as well. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So we basically need the text of SP Save Employee. And now, gender property, we are not going to supply a value for gender column. So let's m specify a default value of null. So if we don't supply a value, a default value of null will be stored in the database table. In a similar fashion, let's modify SP get employee. So within this procedure, Let's actually return, I mean, let's not return gender. So let's change this to alter. All right. So with all these changes, let's close the host that's already running. Let's rerun the host. And let's get to the client. So now let's get employee one, Mark. Let's say Mark's gender is male. And let's save this employee with ID three. OK. And if you look at the database table, at the moment, we only have two employees. We are going to save this employee with ID three. Employee saved. So let's check the database table. And if you look at you know, row number three, gender is basically null because we didn't supply a value for it. So it's stored as null. Now that's fine. Now look at this. The client has specified three, you know, male as the gender for this employee three. Okay. Now when we saved it, you know, the view state of this web application is just displaying that value. But if I go ahead and get the employee, look at what's going to happen, you know, where is the gender value? We basically lost it during the round trip. OK, so and why did we lose it? That's basically because, you know, the client is supplying value for gender. That's fine. So if you look at the client proxy classes, so within this web form one, we have this employee proxy class. If we go to the definition on this one, the client proxy class has got ID, so ID, name, and we have got gender as well. OK, now if you look at the employee class on the service side, we don't have gender property. OK, now when a client has to invoke the service, 
the what will the client do the client is you know building the employee object okay and before the service can be invoked that message that employee object needs to be turned into an XML so all these properties are going to be converted into XML and that XML will be sent to the service okay so within the XML we have a value for this gender as well so when that XML is received at the service the service is going to deserialize that XML and it's going to build an employee object out of that XML okay so that that's the process of deserialization so during that deserialization process this ID data will be mapped you know from the XML into ID property of the employee object on the service side similarly name to name now on the service side we don't have gender property within the employee object so the XML has got a value for gender so it doesn't know the service doesn't know what to do with that gender property value so it's going to simply by default you know throw away that unknown data okay now let's say for some reason we want to preserve that unknown data and return that back to the client okay so how do we preserve that unknown data with the help of this extension data object so let's see how to use this extension data object and preserve that unknown data so now if you look at the client uh, sorry the employee service so within the employee service you know employee data contract basically this co data contract has to implement an interface that is I extensible data object and this interface is present in system dot runtime dot serialization namespace and if you look at this interface this interface has got a single property you know I extensible data extension data object you know that's the return type and this is the name of the property now the implementation of this one is going to be straightforward we are going to make this an auto implemented property so basically what is the purpose of this extension data property now you know if at all if there are any unknown elements of data within the XML that is received on the service side those unknown elements will be stored in this object in this extension data object and then when you know we want to return the data back to the client basically you know we need to serialize the data into XML during that serialization process what we are going to do is take the unknown elements from this extension data object and put them in an XML format in a way that we received them when the service was initially called and once this data is sent in an XML format to the client, the client knows how to pull that data from XML, you know, basically deserialize it and then display it in the appropriate controls on the user interface. Okay, so basically this is going to act as a data store for those unknown elements on the service side. We can use this even on the client side as well. It works in both the directions. Okay, all right, so that's the change within the employee data contract. And if you look at the employee service itself, here I'm going to introduce a private variable within this class uh, of type employee and let's call this underscore last saved employee in a bit you'll understand you know the use of this variable so when we call the save employee method what we are going to do is within this variable we are going to stay save I mean store the employee object that we just saved to the database table and then when somebody invokes this get employee method obviously they are going to pass the ID of the employee that they want to get in that case what we are going to do is just before we return the employee object itself we're going to check okay if underscore last saved employee if that is not equal to null and if the ID so if the ID that is coming into this method you know the ID of the employee that the client is requesting if that ID equal to underscore last saved employees ID in that case what we are going to do is the employee object that we are going to return we are going to set the extension data property to 
the extension data of last saved employee okay now if this is not clear at the moment don't worry we'll put a breakpoint and understand how this code is going to work okay so that's all we have to do and one final change with an employee service we need to change the instance context mode so I'm going to make use of service behavior attribute and that's present in system dot service model namespace so let's decorate this class with service behavior attribute and we need to basically set this named property instance context mode so instance context mode equals instance context mode dot single uh, we'll discuss the different instance context modes in detail in a later video session for now understand that you know single instance context mode means that a single instance of the service class is going to serve multiple clients okay all right with all these changes let's actually run this in debug mode let's delete all the breakpoints that we already have let's put a breakpoint in get employee and save employee let's go ahead and run the service and let's close this client browser and let's also run the client in debug mode okay so now we should be able to preserve the data the unknown data basically alright so let's get employee 1 okay so we are going to return employee 1 let's you know skip through the breakpoint now let's say we want to save this employee if you look at the database table at the moment we've got three employees let's save this employee now mark with ID 4 and notice that we have set gender to male okay so let's click save employee here so now save employee you know a call to this method um, is made and if you look at this employee object first notice that there is no gender property within the employee object itself okay but there is extension data okay so since there is no gender property the data for gender that's present within the XML can't be deserialized you know into this employee object as a result the value for that gender property is unknown at the service side and what what the service is going to do is put it in this extension data property and if we expand this look at this there are there is one member and if you look at the members itself and you dig further look at that there is a name of the XML element called gender and the value of that is actually you know if you scroll down it further you should see so extension data on public members members so gender is the name and if you look at the value the value itself is male okay so you know it's it's preserved in that extension data now I think we have timed out we have already got an exception there okay so let's you know detach all these and let's run the client I mean the service once again and the client so that's what happens during the get process I mean during the save process so I think it might not have saved the employee because the service timed out okay but basically during the process of saving what's going to happen the unknown XML data is stored in that extension data property and when we actually in you know invoke get employee method what's going to happen look at this when we save employee we are storing that employee within this private variable underscore last saved employee okay now when we invoke this get employee method what's going to happen you know obviously we pass an ID to get the employee okay so we we execute this ADO.NET code as usual and then when it reaches this line it checks okay is last saved employee not equal to null meaning we have just saved an employee to the database table and if the ID you know of that employee is equal to the ID that the end user has requested if they match 
then he's, we know that he's requesting the same employee object. In that case, what you do is retrieve the extension data from that last saved employee object and then put it in the extension data property of the employee object that we are going to return to the client. Okay, so now the client has the extension data, meaning there is gender um, property value within that extension data and then that's going to be deserialized, I mean serialized into XML and once that XML is arrived at the client, the client knows how to pull the data out of that XML, basically deserialize it and display it within the controls. So it's that straightforward. Okay, all right, so let's actually look at that in action. So let's disable all these breakpoints so that we don't get a timeout. So let's get employee one. So we got that employee and let's save this employee, you know, with the ID three. So employee saved. Now if you look at the database, so basically we have two employees with ID three. Actually, let's do this. Let's get employee two. So we got a part time employee, Mary. Let's save the gender as female and let's save the ID with 101. Okay, so employee saved. So if we come here, so 101 Mary and gender, look at that, it's null. Now let's get rid of this gender there and look at this. When I say get employee, get all the data, including, you know, gender. If you look at the database table, we don't have gender for Mary. So where is that coming from? That's coming from extension data. Okay. Now, if you, you know, build a new client for the service, you know, if there is a new client, then if the if that new client build the proxy classes, obviously that client will know that gender is not a required field because obviously a property, gender property on the employee class will not be constructed. Okay, so obviously new clients are not going to supply values for gender, so extension data will be null, you know, for new clients, and that's fine. All right, so in short, use iExtensible data object to preserve unknown elements during serialization and deserialization of data contracts. On the service side, at the time of deserialization, the unknown elements from the client are stored in extension data object. And for the service to send that data to back to the client, the service has to serialize data into XML format. And during the serialization process, the data from extension data object is serialized into XML as it was provided at the time of the initial service call. And the client basically knows how to pull that data and then display it in the appropriate UI controls. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.